Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, coming at you with 2 Chronicles chapter 23 today. I'm going to start in verse 1. In the seventh year, Jehoiada strengthened himself and made a covenant with the captains of hundreds, Azariah the son of Jeho Jeroham, Ishmael the son of Jehohanan, Azariah the son of Oded, Maseah the son of Adiah, and Elishaphat the son of Zikri. And they went throughout Judah and gathered the Levites from all the cities of Judah and the chief fathers of Israel, and they came to Jerusalem. Then all the assembly made a covenant with the king and the house of God. And he said to them, Behold, the king's son shall reign, as the Lord has said of the sons of David. Now the backstory here actually comes from Second Chronicles chapter 22. In verse 10 of that chapter it says, Now when Athaliah the mother of Ahaziah saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal heirs of the house of Judah. But Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, who, and stole him away from among the king's sons who were being murdered and put him and his nurse in a bedroom. So Jehoshabeth, the daughter of King Jehoram, the wife of Jehoiada the priest, for she was the sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Athaliah so that she did not kill him. So she was a God-fearing woman. She wanted to make sure that that particular son was alive. Athalia obviously was not a God-fearing woman killing off all of her grandchildren so that she could rule. And so they're getting to the Jehoiada, the priest, who, um, whose wife this was. He was like, okay, we're going to get the king's proper lineage back in place, and we're going to make him king. And in, where are we? In verse 13. So they made him king. When she looked, there was the king standing by his pillar at the entrance, and the leaders and the trumpeters were by the king. All the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets, also the singers with musical instruments and those who led in praise. So Athalia tore her clothes and said, Treason, treason. And Jehoiada the priest brought out the captains of hundreds who were set over the army and said to them, Take her outside under guard and slay with the sword whoever follows her. For the priest had said, Do not kill her in the house of the Lord. So they seized her, and she went by way of the entrance of the horse gate into the king's house, and they killed her there. And that was the end of that. A lot of the times you hear stories of sedition and treason. It makes for generally good fiction. Here is a real-life example of something kind of like that. She accused them of treason when actually she was the one that had committed treason. She rose up and, and it's a little surprising she killed her own grandchildren, but some people will do literally anything for power. So Jehoiada brings in the rightful heir, raises him up as king, and he actively, he doesn't just sit around and pray that the Lord would set things right. He strengthens himself with the leaders of that nation and binds them in a covenant saying, we're going to make this guy the king. They agreed with him. And in doing so, they overthrew her and killed her to make sure that the proper king was raised up. Obviously treason and sedition are generally speaking bad things. But there comes a time when you have to question who's in the right and who's in the wrong. And actually no one even knew that that was the king's son except for Jehoshabeth, the wife of Jehoiada. And concerning what Jehoiada did, I'm assuming that he also knew of the circumstances and probably at the time of making the covenant, he made several others aware, hey, this is the actual heir. And considering the fact of what she did, just practically speaking, probably helped probably helped the leaders of Israel like, you know, she killed her own grandchildren. She tried to take power. So this is the right thing to do. So, so, so even though, again, tradition, sedition and treason, tradition sometimes is bad, but um, <laughs> treason and sedition are usually even worse. Usually they are bad things. Here, a judgment call had to be made. Did they make the right call? Absolutely they made the right call. If for no other reason the fact that Jehoiada was on the side of the one true God, Athalia was, was obviously not. You go down to read further on in that chapter, and it talks about breaking in pieces, altars, images, killing Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And that's in verse 17 of chapter 23. So if for no other reason, who is on the right and who is on the wrong? Sometimes there are questions about these things. Sometimes you've got to dig a little bit below the surface. There may be a secret, like that king's son that was hid away. 
that you just don't know about in order to make the proper call and the right judgment. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.